Hiya, Dave. How's it going? Very well, John. We're working hard to get around all the doors. It's it's good messaging. We're, we're doing okay. Thank you. Good lad. Good lad. Right. Here we go. Week two. So what is your stance on water companies and other corporations abusing the public trust? Thank you, John, for that introduction. Um, today we address the systemic failures of water companies and other corporations breaching the public trust. Water companies exemplify corporate negligence and political mismanagement. Our water infrastructure, built in the 1850s after the great stink of London, was designed for only 25 million people, not the 70 million it serves today. Since privatisation in 1986, infrastructure investment has been lacking, it's been lacking Parliament has failed to hold these companies accountable Investors have taken nearly 120 billion in dividends and increased debt. All the political parties have failed to manage the water companies effectively. Politicians de deflect accountability, leading to a fractured water and sewage system and a corporate culture that re rewards predatory investors. As the elections approach, politicians blame water companies instead of owning their regulatory failures. Imagine leaving a table, a, a table on the street with money and a sign saying, Take what you want. Is it the fault of the person taking the money or mine for, for providing the opportunity? Investors are the same. Political parties have signposted this for decades, now blaming investors and pushing failure onto taxpayers. Upgrading the system to meet current future demands will cost around 200 billion. Nationalization would impose significant extra costs on taxpayers already burdened with rising taxes. I propose, I propose a different approach. Bring investors back to the table and offer them a simple option. Work with the people in Parliament to fix this problem. We should request that they reinvest a fair proportion of the 120 billion they have taken from UK taxpayers, appealing to their social responsibility. If they refuse to cooperate, we will deem them unfit to invest in UK infrastructure ever again. The full weight of the UK Parliament and the people will ensure they cannot hold any investments related to the UK. This approach addresses asset stripping by investors since privatisation and resets the relationship between Parliament and investors or corporations in the UK. We are open for business, but only with socially responsible missionary enterprises. This serves as a start warning to all investors looking to exploit our great country you are no longer welcome. The door is firmly shut. Let us move forward with a renewed commitment to holding corporations and investors accountable by demanding a fair and just partnership where we can rebuild the infrastructure, protect public trust and ensure investments serve the greater good. I hope you nice. agree with me. Thank you very much. Well done, Dave. Well done. Appreciate your time. Thank you.